Hi, I'm Samantha Mabry, Arxon's lead design engineer, and today I would like to take you through some of the small touches that we've added to the 65 in order to elevate her owner's experience. What we tend to find when we look at new boats that have been launched or new brands that come out is we tend to focus on that brand recognition and any hierarchy and history that it might have. And we tend to look at the broad strokes of design. And as such, we kind of lose out on looking at the many thousands of hours of very detailed, complex design that goes into making an Explorer-class vessel like the Arxon 65. Here at Arxon, we try and marry the Explorer-class side of things, the very rugged exteriors, but we also try and marry those with the more soft, luxury interiors. And it's that marriage, I think, that makes Arxon itself a very beautiful thing to have. So this is my in-progress development model for the 65. First of all, I'd like to focus on the forward seating. Now, what you can see here is a nice, compact and removable uh, table for putting on some coffees and sitting and watching the sun rises. It's got some built-in cup holders. So it's very well suited to two people just enjoying the ambience around them. We do have an option where we can swap this out for a larger dining table, which can seat between four or six, although realistically I'd say four unless it gets, you know, a bit too cosy. However, this isn't exactly what I want to touch on at the moment. What I would like to focus on is the optional removal back for this seating. So here we have the standard back, which as you can tell from this corner is designed to be welded together and then welded to the deck itself. However, we understand that some people may not want to have this on deck at all times, especially when all of the cushioning is removed. It obstructs visibility very, very slightly. And it also takes up a little bit of space on the roof, which you might want to use for a sun pad or some other removable arrangement of furniture. So as an optional addition to that, we can provide this lovely unit that is completely removable and makes use of C-Smart fittings at four locations around the perimeter. And by utilising the exact same joints, each one can be positioned on the opposite side without any worry about handedness. So here is what you essentially get when you move it from the deck itself. It's just these two little assemblies with a bunch of C-Smarts and this will fold down and then fold down even further into a nice compact little unit that takes up very little space and can be stowed away on board without you know, worrying about where you're going to stick this thing. So here on port and starboard, we have some life raft cradles that are built into the structure. Now what these mean is that the life raft isn't dangling overboard, it's not liable to be hit, and it's also held neatly out of the way when you are transversing through the vessel. Now there is one on port and starboard, and they do both have hydrostatic release units as well as manual overrides. So if the boat were to go underwater, or to roll and the hydrostatic unit was to be set off, the life rafts would deploy themselves and no manual intervention would be required to do, to do so. However, we do also have the manual overrides should you find yourself in a situation where you believe that to be the best course of action. Looking at the forward starboard side of the vessel, uh, we have two options for our roof ladder. So our first option, is a built-in hatch ladder, which pops out like so from this hatch. What this allows is for quite easy passage from the top of the deck uh, up onto the roof using a very familiar and quite safe method of movement. So from a closed position, the ladder falls out like so, and then falls even further, latching into this clip here. The other option we have is quite a bit more neat and quite small. This is what I call the witch ladder, but it's quite similar to a diving ladder. Essentially what this does is it fits between two C-Smart fittings in the roof of the lower accommodation and the brow of the main saloon. Then 
this pole here can be pulled up from its resting position upwards to create a handrail, like so. This latch is in place using the two C-Smarts that I've mentioned previously, each of which has a holding force of over 1,500 newtons, which I'm sure we can all agree is more than enough for most people. This allows a safe passage onto the deck, onto the roof. This allows safe passage onto the roof whilst also having a closed length of just over one meter, which makes it very stable and means that it's not sat in the way when you're under passage. Now, looking at the aft of the 65, we are going to be looking at the doghouse or the exterior helm. And I think there are many features about this that make it a very comfortable and easy place to sit when piloting the 65. But one of the very small touches that I think really brings an extra element of human usability and just comfort for the owner is that we have taken the time to make sure that we include a cup holder for all of those journeys where you might be getting up at six o'clock in the morning and just want a cup of coffee to keep you fueled as you go under passage. Looking at the aft behind the doghouse seating, we have decided that a nice use of the space might be to include these lovely little hanging storage systems that uh, the owner might choose to use as they're provided or use to template up their own versions. So for example here, we've decided to include a range of pockets and these will be made out of a waterproof fabric, uh, but they offer a nice neat storage solution for all sorts of things that you might want easy access to, such as you could use the larger ones for tools for the Canyon grill, or you might decide to store wrapped materials, serviettes or other things temporarily in the larger one to port. The whole idea of these is to give the owner a bit of an idea as to how they might want to use the vessel and how they might want to expand on you know, the storage that we have provided already and give it their own twist, give it their own personality, make it suit their needs. Our vessels are all about enabling the owners to do what they want to do. And so we hope that when an owner looks at these things, they can then decide for themselves whether that's an idea that they like or whether that sparks something else for them that they might take forward. Now this is a cheeky little detail that I quite enjoy from a design point of view. Throughout the vessel at key areas, I have tried to include the logo. It's a small thing, but I think it adds an interesting element to the design of the vessel and it has been a fun challenge for me personally. There is one here on the Ensign flag holder and there is another one if you look closely here in the mast. So those are just a few of the many features that we've scattered throughout the boat. It's been thousands of hours of design work and so much goes into these things. It's been an absolute pleasure to be able to share that with you. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, please drop them down below and we will be reading through them. And I hope to see you in another video. Bye for now.